Hi everyone, so we're going back to this example, example uh, three on our uh, discussion of calculation of enthalpy change. And in this case, um, you have a reaction. This is actually a very common way of uh, uh, providing you with uh, enthalpy information. So you have a reaction, and the enthalpy is written right next to it, negative 1652 kilojoules for this balance equation. And there's a series of questions that comes along with that um, reaction. Um, and we'll discuss each of this question in a second, but I, what the first thing I want to kind of point out is just the way of the, the way the reaction is written and the way this enthalpy is written. Okay, and what the meaning of that uh, number is. Okay, so let's go to the scratch paper here. Um, if you see, when we write the reaction this way, and when we say that the delta H is equal to negative 1652. What we mean in this case is negative 1652 kilojoules per mole of the reaction. Okay, this is a really important uh, term here. What 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 that means is that it's per mole of the reaction as written. Okay, so per mole of uh, reaction as written. Now. In this particular case, because the reaction has coefficients of 4, 3, and 2 for the three different species in there, what that really means is that you have, in this case, 1652 kilojoules okay, per 4 moles of iron, okay, because we have 4 moles of iron in the reaction as written, uh, and it's also 1652 kilojoules Okay, first off, it's energy release, right? Because it's negative, so it's exothermic uh, per three moles of oxygen. And then lastly, we have uh, 1652 kilojoules of energy that is released if you make uh, two moles of your Fe203. Uh, okay, so this is moles as well. Um, so that's the meaning of this number right here. So this is always something that's really important to understand right away is that when we say 1652 kilojoules, we don't mean 1652 kilojoules per mole of iron or per mole of oxygen or per mole of iron 3 oxide, but what we mean is per mole of reaction and reaction here is the reaction as written, okay? Now you might write this reaction differently. You might just write, you know, 2Fe, three halves O2 and one Fe2O3, in which case the delta H at that point would be just half of this number, okay? It would be negative, uh, you know, 875 or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so again, you would you would interpret that mean, to mean, you know, again, the negative 875 would be interpreted to mean per two moles of iron and so on and so forth, okay? So very important to understand this concept right away um, is this idea that, you know, the number here is given uh, per mole of the reaction. And one mole of a reaction is basically the reaction that is written for you, okay? Now, let's take a look back at the question. The question first says, how much heat is released when four grams, I mean, I'm sorry, four moles of iron is reacted with excess oxygen, okay? This immediately should kind of trigger your, uh, uh, you know, brain to think about limiting reactant because there's the word excess here. So energy, as we said before, enthalpy and, um, you know, internal energy both, they are uh, extensive property, right? Uh, you know, if you have more mass, you're going to have more energy. If you have more, if you're less mass, you're going to have less energy, okay? So when we're trying to figure out how much energy we're going to get or how much enthalpy we're going to get, okay? What we need to think about is, well, how much of, you know, which uh, reaction limits the amount of energy I'm going to get. So it's the same way as calculating, uh, doing stoichiometry with limiting reactant, trying to calculate how much product you're going to get. Because energy is basically just another product, right? So if you can calculate how much product you're going to get, you should be able to calculate how much energy you're going to get. Now, in this particular case, we're just being asked 4 moles of iron. Uh, so going back to the uh, scratch paper here, okay, if uh, for question A, you're being asked 4 moles of iron. So if I have 4 moles of iron, how much energy am I going to get? Well, I know that the energy that I have is 1652 kilojoules per 4 moles of iron. So there you go. Um, these two canceled, which means that you're going to get 
1652 kilojoule of uh, energy or enthalpy change. Remember, enthalpy and energy are interchangeable in these type of uh, most of these cases. So in this case, that's how much you're gonna get. Okay, 1652 kilojoules per uh, for the uh, if you react four moles of iron. Now in the second question, if you look at it, it says how much heat do you get if you react one gram of iron with excess oxygen? So again, as you can see with the way this is phrased, iron is our limiting reactant. So going back to uh, our um, you know calculations here, we have one gram of iron instead of four moles of iron. So the first thing, of course, is I want to just calculate number of moles of iron. And the reason is because I know if I have four moles, I'm going to produce 1652 kilojoules. So I need first to know how much moles of iron one gram is equal to. So then one gram of iron, and then iron is uh, about 56 uh, grams per mole is the molar mass. So if you calculate this out, you get point um, oh one seven nine point oh one seven nine mole. And then so what you need to do to calculate delta H then is just to multiply 0 0.0179 mole times again negative 1652 kilojoules for 4 moles of iron, right? And then if you do that then what you should get should be negative 7.4 kilojoules, okay? So it's pretty clear that this is a much smaller amount of energy than what you calculated in part A. And that makes sense because again, energy and enthalpy both are extensive properties. So if you have more material, you're gonna generate more energy. If you have less material, which is one gram in this case, and it's only equal to this many moles, you're gonna get less energy. Now in question three, you notice that it's asking you how much heat are you gonna get if you react 10 grams of iron and two grams of oxygen. So here you should think about the idea that first is to figure out which of this reactant is limiting because the same way as when you're calculating stoichiometry uh, calculation for products, here you have to determine, you know, how much, which, which of the following will limit the amount of energy that I'm going to produce, right? So the one that's used up, once the reaction is done, once you used up one of the reactants, you don't have any more reaction. If you don't have any more reaction, that means you don't have any more you don't produce any more energy in this in this particular reaction okay so going back now to um, the scratch paper what you have to do then for part C is first uh, find limiting reactant so you have two and we're gonna do this uh, the one that the, the method that I mentioned to you before when we're talking about stoichiometry so we're gonna first figure out the number of moles of iron uh, we have 10 grams is what's given in the in the question Remember, 56 is the uh, uh, atomic mass of iron, so we get 0 0.179 gram. I'm um, sorry, moles uh, of um, of iron, and then for um, oxygen, we're gonna do two grams divided by 32 grams per mole, and if you do that, what you get is 0 0.0625 mole of oxygen. Okay. And then I'm going to quickly uh, change the color a little bit here and remind you that the way I usually figure these things out is instead of actually trying to calculate the amount of product, I just divide this by my stoichiometric coefficient, which is 4 and 3 in this case, and whichever one gives me the smallest number, that's my limiting reactant, right? So when I divide this by um, 4, I get 0 0.0448, 0 0.0448. And then when I divide this by 3, I get 0 0.0208, which tells me that this uh, is my a smaller number. Uh, as a result, that's my limiting reactant is oxygen. Okay. So once I know that that's my limiting reactant, then what I'm going to do is just calculate it. Um, delta H is therefore is going to depend on how much oxygen I have. So it's going to be the number of moles of oxygen, which is 0 0.0625 mole of oxygen, right, 0 0.0625 mole of oxygen times then, remember, negative uh, 1652 kilojoules, okay, that's the original energy, and that is produced when you have three moles of oxygen, so if you multiply these things together, you should get negative uh, about 34.4 kilojoules, okay, so what that says is that if 
you react these two, the oxygen is going to run out first. And the oxygen, there's this much oxygen in the reaction, 0.0625. So if you multiply it by that, I should get this much energy. Okay. Um, the last question, so this is, before I go to the last question, this is really important concept to understand that energy is being limited by a, a you know, mass. So you have to determine then which one has the limit, which one is the limiting reactant. Okay. In order to be able to calculate how much uh, energy you get. Okay. So let's look at the last question here. The last question is, uh, if you, it's asking, is heat, is heat released or absorbed? when 0.005 grams of iron reacts with 0.002 grams of oxygen. Now let's you think about it a little bit, pause the video, think a little bit about it, and then uh, continue it again. You think about this question, it's not really asking you to calculate a certain amount of heat uh, release, it's only asking you is it going to be released or absorbed. So it's really a trick question because this reaction is exothermic, right? So if it's exothermic, that means heat is always released. So in other words, the answer to this is, is yes. Is heat released uh, or absorbed? The answer is heat is released because regardless of whether you use very little amount of uh, reactants or a lot of reactants, the only thing that will change is just how much heat is being released. But heat is always released in an exothermic reaction.